Hi everybody, Todd Pick Appliance here. Cold Monday afternoon. So we're looking at a microwave here and uh, the complaint is um, it's a dim readout now. With the camera on it, you can't really see it, but uh, it is readable, it's just real dim. So I did the look up on the part number and uh, they went ahead and improved the repair. Of course by then, um, he said it was available and it wasn't available so I was able to source one off of eBay and it's a brand new part in the wrapper so we should be good there microwave is in this hole it's one of these semi built in or built in as they call it has this trim kit sorry to remove that four screws these are usually stripped out or whatever so it's always a good idea to have extra screws Especially these because they're small and long, um, but that shouldn't be a problem. So, uh, one of the things though is this is real loose, so I always carry a drill bit and extra screw assortment with me. The last thing you want to do is do this repair or sell them apart and then put it all back together and uh, something falls off right after you leave. So, taking all the screws out here or most of them rather. Notice on most microwaves because we need to take everything off to get at it. And one of the biggest things here is you want to discharge the capacitor because like I said, there's a readout there. It's dim, but it's still usable. So uh, these capacitors store a charge. That's why it's very really dangerous to take these apart without discharging the capacitor. So I'll take this apart, discharge the capacitor, and then start disconnecting wires. So. Um, you'll see on these they have a uh, what's called a Torx security tip. It's got a little hole in it. It's a Torx, Torx screw, but it has this hole in it. So um, I've got this kit here, Harbor Freight. They're like, I don't know, a couple dollars. I can't remember, five dollars maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, cheap. Uh, halfway decent. Since, since I got that kit though, I went ahead and got some nice, these are hardened tips so they last a bit longer. Um, the other ones wore out on me. I've had these, I've had this set for several years now, but uh, it comes with a nice holder and it's got an assortment of stuff. Usually I just use these in the appliance world. You have the uh, security tips. Seems to be pretty much all we use. And most of the time it's on a microwave. So, Take this off, take the security screws in the back, and then there's a lip that this case sits on, or engages to, I should say. And that lip is right here all the way around here and here so you take the screws off the back and lift the case up like that in the front there's a front of the case there's a receiver under the edge here so right there you can see that's a groove then we move on to the capacitor of course you want to make sure you're unplugged forgot that part but Capacitor is right behind here. Now, to do that, basically, you are shorting these out to one another. This is what stores the charge, which is a couple thousand volts usually. So, hard to see, but basically, I'm taking two insulated tools here, two screwdrivers, shorting them together. And that's how you discharge a capacitor. So, this one wasn't very interesting, but um, when they do have a stored charge, you'll see a shock, and uh, again, it's a couple thousand volts, 3,000 volts, so um, that, that'll, that could do some damage to you, for sure. This is what we're replacing. This is the smart board here. So, I'm going to carefully take this apart, put the new one in, and because this is all contained, 
Uh, another thing you can do is um, usually the dimness is affected by some of these capacitors in here. I'm not sure which exact one, um, but I usually, typically I just try and replace um, the unit as a whole because that's how they're available and I typically don't have much time to be soldering. I haven't done that much of it either, so that's how I do it. All right, so I removed that from here. Uh, basically, it was just one screw that holds it on. Now, before I did any of that, I wanted to make sure it was the right one, even though I know I did a good lookup on it, but you just never know. So a couple things, you gotta swap this over. When you take it out, you gotta be careful, because this is your latch. So we gotta be careful of that. There's a few things, we'll see it when I uh, go ahead and reassemble it. So I'll uh, take all these off, because you have to disconnect well, all the wires are over here, but so we'll go ahead and swap it out. This here is the communication cable. That's what the buttons on the face, that's how they communicate with the actual smart board, which is what this is called. It's essentially the control board, but they call it a smart board on this one. So there's the old one. There's the dim readout portion that we're getting rid of. And when you handle these, you don't want to be touching the, you don't want to touch much uh, on it. You just want to handle it from the edges. So be careful of that. Careful not to over torque the screws also. I'll put this back in. Now how these harnesses work is once you slide it in, this piece clamps down on that ribbon cable. So there's also two little tabs in there. This is a real common repair. <clears throat> okay. Now we'll put it back in. So there's tabs on the outside here that line up in the groove. Most of the time when you take these out, a lot of times they're broken. People will take them apart, just try and work on it, and they just they snap. So here's that actuator. That's what gets your that's what opens the door. So this is what was holding it in place. And there's a ground screw right here. This there's this ground and the board ground or to the chassis. Before I put those in, I'm gonna hook all these up though. And I just pulled these apart, but it's not a bad idea to take a picture of your connections. That way you know where everything goes. 
Um, really, on this one, there's not much you can, I guess you could, you could possibly mix these up. So always take a picture. If you're not familiar, take a picture. I do a lot. This particular one I did not. Um, but again, there wasn't too many different setup options. Okay, there's our display. It's tough with the lighting, but I don't, don't want to do that. I don't like running microwaves when I'm standing in front of it, so I'm going to just set this up for demonstration purposes. See that? 3 o'clock, nice and bright. And uh, there you go. So. These are some of the other components on a microwave, but um, that's a smart board replacement. So now we're all good to go on that. Here's the old one. And uh, if you look, I don't know if it would tell you on the diagram, but there's tons of information out there. These capacitors typically control the dimness of that. So if you have an older oven, uh, sometimes you do end up having to solder parts on it. But uh, again, this one, I don't... I don't really spend much time doing that stuff. I just replace them if I can get the part that's available. Uh, that's a GE smart board. There's a bunch of different part numbers, so you have to make sure your model number, uh, the smart board works with the model number that you're working on. So I uh, hope that helps some folks out there, and uh, give us a thumbs up, like us, and uh, any comments are always welcome. Have a good one.